our dear president impeached twice, lost an election he still cannot keep crying about. But President Trump still has some blistering words for Republicans who voted in support of the bipartisan infrastructure plan. Remember that plan? You know, the one with so much money that's gonna help build bridges and tunnels and, and all over the United States and employ you know, tens of millions of people. Well, President Trump wrote, very sad that the rhinos in the House and Senate gave Biden and Democrats a victory on the non-infrastructure bill where they were only 11% of the money being wasted goes to real infrastructure. How about all those Republican senators that voted that thinking that helping the Democrats is such a wonderful thing to do, so politically correct, they just don't get it. Then Donald Trump took a shot at his favorite scapegoat, the now Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. All Republicans who voted for Democrat longevity should be ashamed of themselves. In particular, Mitch McConnell for granting a two month stay, which allowed the Democrats time to work things out at our country's and the Republican Party's expense. Um, This came by the way after House Democrats finally managed to vote on a bipartisan infrastructure bill by a 228 to 206 tally to send a $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill to President Biden's desk. The chamber passed the infrastructure bill in a 69 to 30 vote that included 19 Republican senators, including McConnell. The House vote also included the support of 13 Republicans. But not six progressive Democrats. So who are these Republicans that are now the rhinos in Donald Trump's world? Well, into the Republican defectors, Don Bacon of Nebraska, Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania, Andrew Garbarino of New York, Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio, John Katko of New York, Tom Reed of New York, Christopher H. Smith of New Jersey, and Fred Upton of Michigan are part of the Problem Solvers Caucus, a group of bipartisan lawmakers who helped to negotiate the bill. Another five House Republicans, Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, Don Young of Alaska, Nicole Melitakis of New York, David McKinley of West Virginia, and Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey, bucked their party to follow the party's traditionalist route of backing infrastructure funding. Wow. Hmm. So Francesca, I wanna predict what's gonna happen to these Republicans. I can only imagine that they will follow in, uh, that their other colleagues will follow in Trump's footsteps and berate them. But I just want to briefly say, like, Trump, you know, occasionally he will tell you exactly the game, right? You know, he mostly says the game, but he sort of he dresses it up and makes it cute. He tells you the game immediately. He basically says, we should withhold votes for sorely needed uh, bridges. To prevent them from crumbling, roads to, so people can get to work, um, any kind of removing of lead pipe, piping around the country, which by the way, there's not even enough money in this current bill to fully do that and to replace lead piping around the country. So, no, we're going to vote against that. We're going to ensure that you live a less safe life, that your drinking water is contaminated. Why? So we can stick it to the libs, so we can drink the lib tears. Yes, exactly, out of our cups that are full of, you know, lead poisoning. But doopy doo, like he just tells you right there. And so for any Republican actually paying attention, understand that maybe that those 13 Republicans that voted for it, it's because they haven't politicized potholes yet. But give them time, but for now, they're actually sticking on principle to something that is good for all people, no matter what party you vote for. I have principle, a word with three syllables that would be one syllable too many for somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene or somebody else in the clown caucus on the far right of the GOP. Here's what Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted, 13 Republicans voted with Pelosi to spend 7.5 billion to build EV charging stations all over America to force America to drive CCP battery driven cars. China dominates the EV battery market by over 80% and the United States can't even compete with less than 10% market share. And she wrote those 13 Republican traders who voted to pass Biden's socialist infrastructure bill agree with globalist Joe. That America must depend on China to drive EVs, electric vehicles. The unlucky 13 are China first and America last. (laughs) 13 American job and energy killers downwards arrow. Downwards arrow because you know it wouldn't be Marjorie Taylor Greene if she didn't know how to put an emoji on the screen. Like in how, what kind of mental gymnastics, what kind of Rube Goldberg machine of thought is going on in your brain that you take 
investment in infrastructure in the United States to mean China wins. Like I don't get that at all. Oh, another bridge stayed up in America. Good for you, Xi Jinping. Like what is that? Oh, you got a high speed rail. Good on you, you know, CCP. Like I've just this is your party. They make no sense, guys. Um, Francesca, there was once a time, and I remember this is this way goes way back, and this will tell everybody my age. But I just remember like 20 years ago covering Congress, and there was an infrastructure bill or transportation bill, and the Democrats wanted I don't know 500 billion dollars, and the Republicans yeah. wanted you know 400 billion dollars, and so this the the agreed upon number was like 800 billion dollars. That's the way they compromised. It wasn't to spend less; it was to give everybody what they wanted. Nowadays. You don't hmm. give anybody on the other side anything of what you wanted. God forbid there should be a single dollar that goes to repair a bridge or a tunnel or some sort of waterway in the United States that actually you know might help with sort of I don't know make businesses more profitable because if you can increase if you can decrease the amount of time it takes to ship a product from point A to point B, you can pad your profits because you're spending less money on the transportation of that bill, uh, transportation of that item. In other words, you yeah. increase efficiency with better yes. transportation. Yes. But for some reason, oh, we forget about that. Two two last things I want to say. Absolutely on like previous infrastructure bills and like like Trump himself. He wants to whine all he wants. He wasn't able to pass two trillion dollars he wanted to pass of infrastructure in 2019, but he couldn't because Democrats were investigating him for I don't know which crime of the many, many crimes that he's committed. Um you know, it might have. I think it might have been around the Ukraine stuff. Maybe it was the Russia stuff. Who knows? The point is, he got his fifis hurt, and he was like, "No, I'm not going to do infrastructure unless you stop investigating me." And then they were like, "No, we're not going to stop." And then nothing happened. So he didn't pass a damn thing. The second thing I'll say is, Trump knows, and fascists or neo-fascists know. That if they prevent any progress, any legislation from getting through the halls of Congress, then that is a perfect breeding ground for demagoguery. Why? Because people lose faith in their politicians to actually work and to achieve anything. And therefore, they're like, you know what? We need an authoritarian to just come in and just sort of, you know, to hell with the laws that are written in the books, executive order it all over the place. Now, to be honest with you, I'd like a few executive orders out of Joe Biden, let's be real. And I don't think this bill is all that amazing. But I think we have to understand like what the alternative is and how much that sets up a Trump 2.0. I'm right there with you, Francesca. I mean, look, there's there's so much more that could have been in this bill, um, but the branding of it by Republicans has just sort of reached beyond absurd. I mean, to call it socialism, as Madison Cawthorn and and Gates are saying in Florida. I mean, it's just you know, it's just bizarre. But the fact of the matter is, Americans will soon realize when they see so much construction and they see the roads and highways getting better and the tunnels being more efficient. That actually, this is this is a good thing for everybody. Whether you drive a car and you're Republican, whether you drive a car and you're Democrat, whether you take the bus, whatever it is. It's gonna yeah. be easier for to get for you to get from point A to point B, and that's a good thing for all of us. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member-only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.